Well, hello, retail traders. Here's your update on the video I did the other day of the marijuana stocks that our lovely little president, Brandon, I mean Biden, pardons thousands of convicted of marijuana possession under federal law. So, you know, that'll be a small amount of people, and he's asked the governors of the country to go ahead and also go through the process, which I think is a good start in a way. And we're going to talk about the charts in a little bit. And we're going to talk about them right now. Let's pull up Tilray. So Tilray had a real nice bounce, and then it had a real big pullback. <clears throat> so it didn't really amount to much, but we had a real bad day anyway on Friday. The stock market was down 600 and some points by close, and it just wasn't a good day. The employment numbers came out and they were good as expected, which kind of gets fears back into the feds that they're going to raise interest rates. So we're going to, that was the big effect on the market. I think they would have come back anyway, like I said in the video, kind of wait, see what happens on the pullback, see if they're willing to take, and we'll see what happens on Monday and Tuesday. But we're going to pull up the daily one minute chart just for now. Let's pull up the five minute, five day. You had that big pop right into close and they just kept going. There's a lot of people that got stuck in this stock. And then definitely had its knife <clears throat> pulled back to the little channel of support that I called. I was wanting to see if it would hold in here. It kind of held, bounced up a little bit, hit that 21 and then just pulled on back the rest of the day. Like I said, the market was, wasn't in good shape. We could have probably had a little bitty bounce back up off that pullback, but I'm figuring a lot of people got stuck in it. So we're going to pull up the 20 day one hour and just get kind of a glance. This was that lower support that I was trying to say we we're going to pull back to and maybe hold, but instead it came on back pretty hard. So I'm going to be watching. I'm going to keep still keep them on watch. I haven't traded them yet. I didn't get into them Friday, nor did I get into them Thursday. I want to kind of bring this video to your attention because this is the common knowledge of how these pot stocks run. They have a nice little breakout and then they pull back. Sometimes they'll have a continuous run to two or three days and they'll still pull back. So if you're in these trades, I would always play cautious when you have a big breakout like that. I didn't take any of them. I waited just to see what would happen the next day. And we're definitely going to go pull back to the 200 SMA on these charts. It does like to use it as a resistance level and it could use it as a support. And then we could run this thing back up again to at least 351, 350. So I'm going to still keep these on watch. This is TLRY. And the next one that we talked about was P-L-N-H-F, P-L-N-H-F. These are just some of my few favorite ones. It also pulled back. It actually landed on the 65. I think that is the 65. Yep, that's the 65 EMA. I just started adding this to my charts. I want to try to play around with it and see if I can catch trades on it. I'm still going to stick with my 51 EMA because I like it a lot. But we did dip down to that 65. <clears throat> this thing could pull back a little bit more. This is Planet 13 Holdings. We could probably come back down here right around 119 maybe and see if that holds support. There's the beginning of that breakout and I can see a pretty good little pivot point on the 20 day one hour. And if that doesn't hold, we'll just keep on pulling it back and then I'll run it back up again, find some kind of resistance right around 133 to 141 using this 20 day, one hour chart. So I'm gonna keep it on watch also. Same example, these breakouts, they don't last very long. Pulled back real hard, but I think market conditions had a lot to do with that drama there. But I still think they would have pulled back. We just gotta retest the bottoms again and see if they wanna bounce up. Uh, there might be some people stuck in the trades, 
CHC. I'm always optimistic. This one really took a nosedive. CGC. This used to be one of my second favorite trades. We almost hit that resistance that I called out to break at 424. But it did not do it. It hit 417. So it's pulled on back. I'm going to keep a good eye on this this week. See if we can run it back up. And maybe find an equilibrium right around the 319 area. Be good for a small scalp maybe. It should find support down here on the double triple bottom right around 271 to hold. That's going to be your solid support. And if it dips down below that neckline of this head and shoulders, inverted head and shoulders, they could run back up and hit that 318 again and then try to break that. But this is on a 20 day. We can definitely get back up here to 380 if the momentum starts to pick up any. And then we got Cure Leaf, one of our favorites. C U R L F. It'll have the same kind of results, but it kind of held okay. It created a symmetrical flag and then a bare hammer right into close, bouncing off that nine on the 20 day, one hour chart. Now I think it can pull back to the 200 again, and if that happens, that's the pivot point on the 20 day, one hour chart. And if that holds, you could run it back up. But I don't think I'd want to, I think I'd want to try to catch it down here right around 516 and see if it holds support right there. So these lower supports that I mentioned, it wouldn't hurt to set you an alert just right above them. And that's kind of what I do. I'll set that alert right there and see if it pulls back to it. That's 525, looking for 516, see if that holds. So I look for patterns and we got a, a downward wedge right here. And the last one, one of my really favorite ones, I really like when the, when the stocks are in the mood. This one here really does good. It's a GRWG. It also pulled back to the 200. And that's the pivot point on the 20 day chart. Now on the chart itself, I'm going to suggest maybe right in here would be your, your 20 day pivot point at 408. So if it dips on back down and pulls back, it could find some support in this channel, this Darvis box right here. I'm going to color that in. It's kind of like a little Darvis box. And that pivot point in that Darvis box is right there. We're going to run this here. Let's see how close that comes to that pivot, pivot point there. They've got it right around 369 for the 50% <clears throat> inside of the pivot. And that's pretty close. I like that. I like that 50% right there. So right around 367, if that holds, that or catch it at the bottom of this box. And I'm going to run trend lines all the way, price lines all the way across it. I had a guy on, I call them trend lines. I had someone on YouTube say, they make trend lines. Them are price lines. And that's what they are, I guess, if that's what you want to call them. 350. But I call it a trend line because it's in a trend. You have consistency. And then the pivot point in that channel, which is perfect, I think, at 369. With the top of that box being at 384. Just like that. So keep a good eye on them. This coming week, see if they have any kind of volume. To Some of these people I know got stuck in these trades. And they're probably going to probably take it up about 50%. Now, another way I like to look at these, and I'm going to go ahead and do it. This is a Fibonacci chart. This is a Fibonacci, and you have the link on TOS. It's down below in the content. You're welcome to go ahead and copy this and use it on your own due diligence. And that 50% retracement on the 20 day is right at 418. Now, I like to set up Fibonacci's on, on, the, on the breakouts. So I'll take, use my Fibonacci retracement here, stick it to the bottom of that candle that it broke out from, and that's still at the 50% mark on that 20 day. So that's a, that'd be a hard resistance to break if it decides to come back up 
and break that 418 or if it pulls on back maybe a little bit more and, and find support at the bottom here and then run it up to the top of that Darvis box then to that 50% line. So there's all kinds of ways to trade these. I call this here another way to chart this up. This is the sneaky snake trading strategy and I'll show you how to chart it up that way. You take your snake indicator you run it from right there to there and bring it on down and that's your snake this is your breakout of the channel and it's pulled back so it landed on that 50 SM that 200 SMA on a regular stock I mean marijuana stocks are a little tough to play because they're a lot more riskier and they're probably going to have a lot more bears after this run get stuck in this and not want to trade it again but eventually they're going to break out but you have the snake you have a little a little bitty snake here with a breakout pull back to the 200 sma and if that holds that can run up and have a pretty good boom if the news comes out good next week or you know if we start hearing some more pop up in the news but for right now just remember always play them cautiously I kind of mentioned that in, in the video that I did before this one that when you have these initial breakouts wait for them pull backs and see what they do see if it's worthy because you don't want to chase this sector at all you want to get it at the dip and buy it at resistance and that's it for the sneaky snake trading strategy that's the marijuana sector and Brandon I think is about the only good thing he's done so far since he's been office was pardon some of these felons. Have a great day. Retail traders.